Welcome back to another episode of the Quarter Sportscast. I'm Jared Judy. I'm here again as usual with my buddy Todd Corley. How are we doing today? Hello and welcome to another episode of Fifth Quarter Sportscast. I'm your co-host Todd Corley and I'm here as usual with my host Jared Judy. Jared, how are we doing today? <laughs> uh, we're doing good. I feel like there's an echo. Maybe it's just me on my end. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> Did we do the cheers of the week yet, or am I just jumping the gun? You're jumping the gun, but let's jump right into it. Uh, we, we got uh, week seven uh, action just finished up. Got a lot of close games this week, so we put out the poll. Uh, which one lived up to the hype? We got the Browns, Colts, Patriots, Bills, Steelers, Rams, Vikings, 49ers. Browns Colts surprisingly only got twenty percent. Vikings Forty ers eighty percent. I I voted for Browns Colts when you uh when your defense basically is uh, the dominant side of the ball to keep you in the the ball game, <clears throat> and Miles Garrett runs wild all over that offense, gets a safety, causes a defensive touchdown. You win by one, yeah. Uh, He's a dog. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you the. Uh, it, this seems like a trend, but I'm gonna give you the. Uh, the cheers of the week, Cleveland. Okay, give it to him. Give it to him. Pop a top, baby. Cheers. There it is. Good boy, is, Jared. Is that uh, a pumpkin slayer any good? It's not bad. It's not bad. It's got more yeah. ounces than your average beer, which is like yeah. what I like, especially yeah. you know. Yeah, I I don't know. I I guess I understand why Vikings 49ers got it because the Vikings basically have been dog trash. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. What were the official results of this poll? Vikings 49ers 80%, Browns Colts only 20. Fuck out of here. I understand why the Vikings 49ers got it because they weren't expected to win at all. And the 49ers are still quoted as the top dog, one of the top dogs in the NFC. But man, come on. I mean, you got your what was that uh the uh WWF from back in the late 80s early 90s. What was that guy's name? Million dollar man. Ted DiBiase. Yeah, so you got your $230 man or 230 million dollar man. Um he he just can't throw the ball. He can't play. He's struggling. He's on the bench. You got your what is it? Third stringer, I guess. Is that what he's considered? Yeah, or is he the P- backup? PJ Walker. Yeah. So you got him playing and you got that dominant defense and you're still winning. So, I mean, I don't know. That was my thought. I mean, I, I understand why people went with Vikings 49ers because they were Yeah, because everybody it. on the, everybody who listens to this podcast is a big Kirk Cousins fan. I mean, yeah. I felt it move a little bit when I threw him that, when I saw him throw 45, but man, whew, 45 attempts. That old motherfucker. Wow. I don't know how he still has an arm because he throws a ton. I mean, he has to because they don't have a running game. But, man. Madison. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just I, – I, I said it from the beginning of the year. It, with Chubb going down, that's a huge blow to the offense because it re- literally revolves around Chubb. And I said if they're going to be competitive and win games, it's going to be on the back of the defense. And so far, the defense is – They've shown up and they've they've kept them in games and won them games, but I mean, let's be honest. If Miles Garrett gets hurt, that's going to be a huge blow to them. That guy's a freaking he's a he's a monster. I mean, I wouldn't put that juju out in the. Uh, did he? Uh, uh, did he? Did he get that random drug test yet? <laughs> but the way he was flexing, I can't believe he didn't get random drug tested. That guy gets drug tested when he ain't breaking lives, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. He, it, yeah, it, those things are quote unquote real random, I'm sure. But let's fly through uh, some of the games here and uh, break some stuff down. We had last Thursday night's uh, barn burner with the Jags and the Saints. The Jags hold off the Saints. God, that was a tough watch. The the Saints and Carr. That yeah, it ain't working. <laughs> he they're they're struggling. Um, Michael Thomas, he's, he's, 
average. He's not having a phenomenal year. He's okay. Alave, he's doing okay, but Derek Carr is just – he's not great. He's not doing good there. Um, but I, I, I don't know. It, it just seemed like the Jags were going to run away with that game and it was going to be a blowout. But, you know, the – the uh, the Saints kind of took a page from the Packers and decided, you know, they wanted to wait till the last half of the fourth quarter to finally start making it a game. Um, but Jaguars ultimately come out on top, thirty-one twenty-four. Anytime they get away, they get a win, uh, like on this side of the pond in the continental United States. That that's huge. That's huge. God, good for them. I, I, I didn't. I drink to them. I mean, I know that Jags always do really well overseas. But I didn't realize they're still undefeated. That's. I feel like uh, the chips are stacked against them at some point. But, but hey, home away from home. That, that's their. I was gonna say that's their their second home away from the uh, the pool down in uh, Duval County. Duval. <clears throat> but we'll uh, move we'll on to uh, another game here. We kind of already touched on this a little bit with our cheers of the week. Browns edged out the Colts for a one-point win, 39-38. Watson, we already discussed, is out again. Hmm. I, what? What's his deal? Like, is this a pride issue or is this just a Stefanski issue? Like, he he's not any good even when he does play. So you guys thought he was getting all his massages for sexual favors. He was getting all his massages to stay loose. See what happens when this man gets tight? Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> he, He's been tight all season. <laughs> That's right. Multiple ways. I, I don't know. Is this an issue that it's like a, a, a legit injury? Or is this just a, hey, I hate Stefanski and I refuse to play for him? It's probably a little bit of both. That last, man, I, I, I thought he hurt his pride more than anything. This last week, I'm like, he's laying there because he don't want to get up because he, he, yeah, he's embarrassed. I, I'm, I, I don't know. I had uh, had this talk with a couple other buddies of mine, and they're all in on Watson. They think he's so much better than you know the alternative, and it's just like, uh, really? Because I don't know too many people that are huge fans of him. Yeah, he has the potential, but as it now, I feel like he's kind of living on that kind of. He's kind of caught the fantasy football vibe where he's living off of past name recognition, but when you look at the stats, they're not great. Like his production's not good when he is in. I, I still have uh, have that image in my mind. What was that? A couple couple weeks ago, I forget who it was they played, where he was running and then you know he got caught and then just turned around and chucked the ball backwards for like fifteen yards. <laughs> like what? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to gauge his production in Cleveland because he had all that time off before he started in Cleveland. Yeah, and I don't think that obviously helped, no. but I don't, I just, I don't know. I don't, I would have to think any position, especially quarterback, it's awfully hard to take that much time and then come back in pure form. I mean, the only good thing is he's not been injured, you know, he I, in the two years that he took off. So he hasn't had, you know, a beating, whereas if he was still playing, he would have been taking that, those hits. So that's the only good thing, but he doesn't look anything like he was when he was at his peak in Houston. No, that's a sad part because they paid him. Whew, man, they paid him on that premium. Man, boy. I, they, yeah, I we'll mean, and, and that's fully guaranteed. So I don't even know how they almost have to, unless they can sucker somebody else to take that contract later on. There's they're no on that. They're they're on that for the hook for the next foreseeable future. So it's like, like it or not, he could suck or not. He's either going to be on the bench because he's not any good, or he's going to be out there potentially losing you games because you don't have another way around it. Which that's a shitty situation to be in. Yeah, he's here to stay. But ultimately, the Browns and that defense stepped up and did get the last second win. Uh, I think it was what Hunt scored the game winning touchdown. Uh, I can't remember if I was pretty drunk, but it sounds right. Up the middle, yep. Yeah, 39-38, they get the win. They're still rolling in the competitive AFC North. Uh, we'll move on here. Questionable penalties there that uh, everybody thinks. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Well, okay. there's been plenty. There's, there's there's been plenty of calls, and if we uh, we get some time at the end here, we can kind of talk about those between college and pro. There's a lot of questionable calls going on that I saw that didn't really make a lot of sense to me. But uh, we'll move on to uh, Billy B, the Patriots and the Bills. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't see this one coming. Um, I don't think anybody did. Bills lose 29 to 25 to the Patriots. Uh, I don't know. I didn't bet on that one. I'll tell you that. No, I steered clear of it. If I remember right, I saw that Bill has uh, Josh Allen in the Bills number. I I don't 300 know that... regular season wins. Look at he him. did. He did. He got his 300th win, third coach in history to do so. Um, and then I'm sure it probably felt good to, you know, given the, how their season's gone, the fact that you got it over a rival, division rival, probably was a little extra satisfaction. But ultimately, Mac Jones, he got the last second touchdown. I don't know. I don't think this really makes a big deal for Not a uh, bad day for the, Mac Jones, man. No, but I, I mean, ultimately, in the grand scheme of things, I think it's a one week blip, and I don't think it's going to change the ultimate picture of the Patriots season. Like, I just, I don't see it. No, they're trash. But, yeah, I, I'm more concerned about the Bills. They, uh, they barely beat the uh, Giants couple of weeks ago they lost to the patriots um i mean there's a lot of teams that are out there like that are touted pretty highly but i mean granted the afc is pretty top heavy but i mean the chiefs they're not humming like most people would expect them to though they'll, they'll figure it out but the bills they're not humming either the same thing with cincinnati uh i don't know I, I mean the AFC they're they're loaded across the board. But man, I there's talk already that the Bills windows closed. I don't know about that because they still have so much talent on that team on both sides of the ball, but man, some of these some of these losses are they're head scratchers, that's for sure. They'll be all right. But uh and yeah, we'll move on to the next head scratcher here with Raiders Bears. I don't really understand what these teams are. It's confusing. We got the Bears beating the Raiders thirty to twelve. So you had a guy who was what was it D two or D three? I don't even remember. Quarterback taking over for Justin Fields. He was inactive yeah. and decided, hey, he's going to have the game of his life. Um. I mean, a 21 of 29, 162 passing touchdown. Um, his first start, and he goes out, gets a win. Granted, it's over the Raiders, but still, he gets a win. And everybody kind of thinks that Justin Field is the only weapon that the Bears have. But they look like straight trash with Fields in there. I'm not saying they look any better with Badgen in there, but I don't know. I I didn't I didn't expect them to win. I honestly didn't. But then again, it was Hoyer against a D two D three quarterback. So I kind of figured by default Raiders might win in like a nine six game or something. But yeah, I um. I don't know. I don't know what to think of either yeah. of these teams. Brian Hoyer, Aiden O'Connell, Tyson Bajan. Wow. Yeah. Kind of reminds me a couple years ago when uh, Rodgers got hurt. Rodgers got hurt, and they were playing in Cleveland, and it was the Deshaun Kaiser, Brett Hundley Bowl. Ugh. That game was rough. <laughs> it was that's a rough brutal, watch. Man. That's, that, that's bonkers. That What's confusing? Sense. What confuses me about the Raiders? I mean, obviously, I think we can both agree that Josh McDaniels sucks. He's a horrible coach. But how do you have Josh Jacobs, who lit the world on fire last year? Phenomenal. He's not even – he's useless. 
They don't uh, utilize him at all. No. He's 11 for 35. Trevor's and then you have arguably one of the top three. And the only reason I'm saying top three is because you, you, you got the two studs in Miami. Devontae Adams. And he's seven for 57. I mean, you're, you're, mm, yeah. I now, I understand. I, you're saying I understand. top three because you're hanging on to his fucking Green Bay glory days. No, 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 no. Are you talking I'm about saying... top three alive and playing this season? Because I know Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and Tyree Kill are my top three. But well, well, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, 10, but, I'm uh, saying talent wise. Talent wise, he has. Yeah, he's top 10. Absolutely, but he looks like he's shit. Not, he's not top he five. looks like he looks like shit this year. He looks like shit because he's on a crappy ass team, and I don't know that he would ever admit it out in public. You're never going to hear it, but he got he got hosed, and I can't imagine he's happy about it. He went there because he didn't want to play with Jordan Love, rightfully so. He went there to play with Derek Carr, his buddy, and then they basically told him, "Hey, don't come to the building because we don't want you getting injured." Kicked his ass out. And now he's playing with Jimmy G. Oh, nope, he's hurt. No, he, hang on, let me. He's playing with Hoyer and a no, rookie, no. a rookie. Like, this couldn't have went any any worse for him. So he has to be pissed. But he's not being used either. So I don't really know. Aside from Max Crosby, I don't know who that who their talent is. I really don't on that team. It's it's their defense, and that's it. <laughs> They're not great. No, no. I mean, the yeah, anytime you lose the Bears, it's probably not good. Yeah, but uh, they're out west, so I never have to struggle through their games, and their fans it's kill each other. So it's true. It's true. Yeah, it's fitting. To hell with them. Yeah, I can agree. But we'll move on uh, to the next one here. We got is kind of one of those clunker games, and I know everybody has one. Um, I don't think, I mean, I don't know. I don't. We'll see if they string a trend here. I don't think they will. But Lions just get blasted by mm. Lamar and the Ravens, thirty-eight to six. Yeah. I, Somehow Lamar Jackson became a pocket passer, and the world I, spun the opposite direction. Yeah, um, I uh, I don't think Detroit's as bad as that game showed. God no, I, but it, it's kind of hard when Lamar's back there just picking you apart. I mean, there's nothing you can do. It's just the nature of the beast. It's an off day, but man, that they got handed, they got it handed to them. But you know, we'll we'll kind of see how they they fare moving forward. Um. Week eight, I think they'll bounce back pretty convincingly. They play the uh, previously mentioned Raiders, so I think that'll be a nice slump buster for them. But <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I didn't expect that to be. I kind of figured it might be a closer, like three, four point game. Definitely didn't expect it to be a blowout. That didn't see that one coming. I oh, know I sure as hell didn't. God, glad it, I don't think I bet anything on it but boy if i did i lost my ass i i didn't touch it but if i did i probably would have bet the lions so it's a good thing i didn't i bet my kids college tuition on the lions on that one uh, yeah woo! it's okay yeah but school ain't bad we uh we i mean don't look now but the uh steelers who look absolutely horrible um and everyone in the entire U.S. and even parts of Canada, from what I hear, are chanting "Fire Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator." Yet somehow they're still four and two, and they're <laughs> second in the AFC North. Blows me away. I don't get it because it's not like they're burning the doors down. Um, Kenny Pickett, he's average, seventeen twenty-five, two thirty, no touchdowns, no interceptions, sacked twice. You have the, uh, as we previously mentioned on this podcast, Najee Harris, overrated, 14 for 53 yards, 3.8 average. It's nothing fantastic. Um, Pickens, had a, Pickens had a pretty good game, 5 of 107. How the heck 
do they beat the Rams? Because I think the Rams are a lot better than we kind of expected this game. Um, again, I don't know, understand what happened. Uh, I did have some money invested in player props for this game. Cooper Cup 2 of 29. Did he get re-injured again or what the heck happened? Because it basically was the uh, your guy, the Nakua show. 8 for 154. 8 for 154. Did they not realize that that was their only weapon this game? Puka, dude, Puka's the real deal. I mean, I figured when Cooper Cup came back, he was going to take some of that. But a lot of people did. No, apparently not. Puka and people that aren't watching the Rams, I'll tell you that. Because Puka's apparently not. a bad little dude. Puka's a bad dude, man. Uh, well, I mean, when you look at the stats, it sure seems to endorse that. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I know I didn't watch the game. I know there was some controversy whether, uh, you know, as far as a fourth down uh, with Kenny Pickett. Well, we can kind of touch on that here when we get to all these controversial calls. I I don't know. I don't know what to think of the refs because there's been plenty of blown calls I've seen in certain games, and I just I don't know what to think of it. I don't know how we're in 2023 and we still can't get calls right. But like I said, we'll we'll get to that. Um, not a whole lot to say here. The Chiefs, Chargers, Chiefs are the Chiefs. They blew out the Chargers. It wasn't even close. Uh, the um, Philadelphia and Finns. I I don't know. I what would you think of that game? I thought it was going to be a lot more. The score it looks like it was closer than what it really was. I didn't feel like Miami was in the game for the majority of the game. I feel like Philadelphia was manhandling them and doing whatever it is they wanted to do. Um, let's see if I can. Pull. I'm sort of disappointed, in Miami. I mean, damn, I don't know, man. I mean, just looking at the stats here, Philadelphia and their patented. Uh, brotherly tush shove push. a tush push whatever yeah, you want to yeah. call it four for four and at one point it was they were what on like their 20 25 30 something like that and they went for it and they damn they got it every time every single time they attempted it they knew it was coming couldn't stop it they got it every time can't I mean, stop it baby i i don't know i mean they put up a, a decent game looking at stats but i mean I just didn't feel like it was as close as the score in, indicated. The Eagles did uh, end up winning 31-17. But, I mean, you look at two was 23-32, 216, touchdown, interception, sacked three times. That defensive line just wreaked havoc on Tua. Um, they made his night hell. But Man, then f- Fourth down. F- Eagles, four for four and fourth down. Exactly. So Damn. if it's not broke, don't fix it. I mean, why Jeez. would you change? And penalties. No penalties? Eagles, yeah. none. Eagles, no penalties. Clean yeah. game. That's the thing that caught my eye was the, 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 the fourth down conversions and the no penalties. And then when you flip the other side of it and you look at – Ten the, penalties for 70 yards. Yeah, that's not going to help you win a game. That's going to kill Both you. for two on fourth. Four and a third down there about the same, but shit doesn't matter if you get who get who gives a shit about third down if you're getting it every time you want on fourth. Yeah, Jeez. they they basically could do whatever they wanted, and it kind of blew me away because I expected it to be a closer game, but I felt like Philly had Miami's number and they could do whatever the hell they wanted on offense. They could do whatever the hell they wanted on defense. You, Philly only punted once. Exactly. And I'm surprised Shit. it was even that much, to be honest. If you're That's going for it on every fourth, why would you punt? That's crazy, I mean, man. I mean, it it tells me that it had to have been like a fourth and seven or fourth and ten, because otherwise, why would you go for it? But, I mean, when you look at the stats, they, I mean, they're not crazy. I mean, like I said, Tua, 23 of 32, 216, touchdown, interception, three sacks. Obviously, the three sacks are what sticks out. But then you look at Jalen Hurts, 23, 31, 279, two touchdowns, interception, also three sacks. So they are they were very identical. 
Um, Mostert, 9 of 45. Swift, 15 of 62. The thing that sticks out the most is uh, A.J. Brown, 10 of 137. So far stat wise, that was the biggest thing that stood out. Otherwise, stats they they were pretty close, but it's the penalties that killed. I mean, time of possession was in Eagles' favor. P- penalties were in Eagles' favor. Like, there's nothing. It just it it felt like it was not as close as the score indicated. Good for you, Nick Sirianni, and good for you, Mount Union Purple Raider. Yeah. Here we go. Cheers to you, buddies. Yeah. Where was he at before? He coached with somebody else before Philly. I think I'm dying inside. I forget where he was. I can't remember. But we will uh, we'll move on to uh, the Monday night game here. As we mentioned earlier, 49ers-Vikings. Definitely, uh, yeah, definitely didn't do good on this one. Definitely lost some money. Uh, 49ers fall to the Vikings, 22-17. Um, yeah, I, I I, I don't know. The San Francisco 49ers basically look completely inept. They made Kirk Cousins look like a future Hall of Famer. Brock Purdy looked Wasn't like a rookie. Best game. Wasn't his best game. Uh, yeah, I would say so. Probably because uh, he got his egg scrambled. Probably, like, yeah, probably, fast. probably didn't help. I mean, McCaffrey was probably the shining star of that game. He's as always he, a shining star. Baby. I was going to say, as he usually is. <laughs> um, but then, I mean, you, you got Brock Purdy, twenty-one of thirty, two seventy-two touchdown, two interceptions, and a sack. And then let's go to the other side: thirty-five of forty-five. 378, two touchdowns, one interception, no sacks. No sacks, baby. That old like, line kept him clean, baby. He didn't get touched. He had all the time in the world. Um, you know, you got Jordan uh, Addison picking up for uh, Jefferson. Against the Niners defense. Think about that shit. Yeah. The Niners defense. That You got Nick Bosa. No you got... Um, Green Law, you got Fred Warner. I do like me, me some Green Law. Fred and yet, Warner, he did, did. Now, did you see the? I don't know if he's if you watched the whole thing or you saw highlights. Did you see the one when War? I think it was Warner. Pretty damn sure it was Warner. Leapt over the line and like wrapped up Kirk Cousins. It, they were going to do is like a, they were going to do their own little tush push brotherly yeah. shove whatever. Yeah. Yeah, he jumped right over top. Man, that was that. I mean, it ultimately didn't really matter because no, I I I yeah, saw that. that. Was fun, man. Well, I well, was like, I, yeah. Well, and I saw that, and I wondered how did he not get flagged when Quay Walker did it almost the identical thing earlier in the season, and he got flagged, and I was like, oh well. Now you go back and look at the highlight and the replay. Warner didn't make contact. That's how. That's what I was wondering. Did he touch the O line? No, apparently he didn't. But I'm like, Jesus, to be able to get that high and still make a play. That's crazy. It's impressive. It's impressive. That's fun. But um, yeah, Addison. I think the 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 biggest plays from that game that I saw that impressed me at least, and then most of anybody that was watching it. And uh. Who was it that was on the call? I can't even remember. Who called that game? Mm. Oh, oh, that it was the Manning cast. That's what it was. I was watching the Manning cast. No, yeah, Monday. And I and I think it was Aaron Aaron Rodgers was on. And it was mm-hmm. Peyton. Mm-hmm. Peyton goes, Did you just what just happened? like he was he was blown away. When Addison caught the ball, it was ripped away interception and then he turned around and ripped it back and took off <laughs> like that that and the fred warner yeah. leap was mind blowing to me addison had himself a ball game he did he uh he definitely did that's for sure um but with that being said we have our monday night football uh polls we uh we pick 
a uh, couple players here and see get some get some reads here on who people's favorite players are from the Monday night matchup. So we have our uh, favorite um, Vikings, Randy Moss, Adrian Peterson, Fran Tarkenton. Uh, I went with Randy Moss, or actually, I didn't go with Randy Moss for that one. I went with uh, Jared Allen. As much as I hate the Vikings, absolutely hate the Vikings, Jared <laughs> Allen. Jared Allen was a wrecking ball back in the day when the defenses ran the show. He was an unstoppable force. You had Lance Briggs, Peanut Tillman, and Ur Locker in Chicago. That was a force to be reckoned with. Granted, Detroit was a dumpster at the time, but like it was incredibly tight trying to play those games when Jared Allen was there. But uh, He's a bad we got. Dude, man. What's that? He was a bad dude. He he was definitely number sixty nine. He actually played for Chicago too for a minute, didn't he? He did. He was a bear. He was, he was uh, Panthers, Chicago, Minnesota. Is that it, or am I missing somebody? Mm-hmm. He didn't play for the Niners. No, no, not, not one of them. But uh, the poll, we got 50% Randy Moss, 25 for Peterson, and zero for Fran Tarkenton. Kind of shocked Peterson didn't get more votes, to be honest. I figured that was a runaway. Um, but, hey, it's kind of hard to hate on Randy. Peterson was a different type of running back, man. I, I always felt like he ran high, but, God damn, he had a little, little hitch in the step. God, he was good. He man, was had good. He had – the speed of Barry with the strength of Derrick Henry. Like that's, it's unbelievable. He doesn't even look that big, but you see him come through that hole and he just runs people over. Like in his prime, he couldn't, you couldn't stop him. He's He's one of those guys. He was one of those guys that if you didn't go low, you were going to get ran over. But we got uh, favorite all-time Niners. I mean, this is kind of like a couple weeks ago with the Cowboys. Pick your poison. There's a million of them. We went with uh, Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, Steve Young, uh, or other. We had Joe Montana, 25%. Jerry Rice, 50%. Surprisingly, Steve Young, zero. And then uh, other write-in vote, Ronnie Lott at uh, 25%. Honestly, there's really no wrong answer here. <laughs> no, they're all they're all in the Hall of Fame for valid, very good reasons. I uh, I, I like some, I, some Ronnie Lott. Anybody who cuts off their fucking fingers so they can play, yeah. God bless you, sir. Yeah, I uh, I went with Jerry because I mean, like Elway ruined your childhood. Jerry Rice ruined a lot of mine because in the early '90s, it was Green Bay going up against Dallas. And the uh, triplets, or Steve Young, Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, every yeah. single time. And that's part of the reason why I absolutely can't stand Dallas or San Francisco now, because I got so tired of seeing them every damn year in the in the playoffs. God, but he, so good, man. he's hard to hate. He yeah. is phenomenal. And uh, Dancing with the Stars champion. It's true. The Mirabal Trophy. <laughs> It is true. (laughs) But we have uh, our favorite all-time crossover uh, players that played for both Minnesota and San Francisco. I'm going to be honest. This one was kind of harder for me. Um, Roger Craig, Randy Moss, Alex Boone, or other. Randy Moss, again, 67%. Alex Boone, 33%. I went with Randy, but... I was kind of torn. I almost went with Boone, mostly just because Randy's career, no one remembers. I, mean, I don't want to say no one remembers him, but his career is not remembered as a 49er. He's a Viking. And he had a pretty good season there with the Patriots, too. It's true. But, I mean, his – Raiders, too, maybe. Raiders a year? 
I feel like he was all over yeah. the game here towards the end. I think Randy Moss played for the Raiders once. He, he, yeah, that sounds right. He may have. But, I mean, it's – I don't know. Vikings is who you really associate him with. Yeah. But I uh, I almost did a write-in vote for Chris Carter, but, I mean, I didn't think that Chris Carter really matched oh, no. up with Randy Moss. But then again, uh, as far as the – I mean, he only played for the Vikings from what I remember, and I felt like as far as the write-in vote, Jared Allen was a little bit more of a dominating Damn. player. Talk about the the one team we didn't talk about Randy Moss playing for that I completely forgot, the Titans. Oh, yeah, he had a nice little stint there. Randy Moss with the Titans. Was he even there a full year? Uh, no, I don't think so, because he was, we got him on the old Wikipedia Got him on the uh, back to the Vikings. 20, I think he Vikings in 2010, also with the Titan, Titans and Vikings 2010. And the yeah. Patriots. So he went from the Patriot end of the Patriots. I don't know what the lineage there, but yeah. Hmm. Good Lord. Yeah, I don't – I mean, I remember now that you said it, but I didn't remember that he was with the Titans all that long. He spent more time with the Oakland Raiders. It's true. Which wasn't all that long either. Um, He's a bad dude, man. When he raised that hand, whew, you know it's coming. As a defensive guy, when he raises a hand, you might as well just say, "What well, got beat? I got mossed." Because you know it's coming. Oh, you have know. no chance. He's a bad dude, man. I actually voted for Roger Craig on that crossover list because I just, man, I loved Roger Craig. Love. See, see, I don't. I mean, I know who he was. But I don't remember him as much as the other two. I almost went with Boone, to be honest. The local guy, yeah. But I feel like Boone was more of a Niner than anything else. Yeah, he, yeah, I remember more of the Niners. But the, uh, the sl- sort of slim pickings on the. It's a tough one. On it's those. a tough one for a crossover, and it's. I think it's. I think it's going to be even a little tougher this week with the Lions and the Raiders. I don't, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of too many that played for both of them. Yeah, I got a 13.1% brew on board, baby. I, I can't even tell you what I ate for lunch. <laughs> well, with that being said, we'll uh, touch on some of the highlights here and then uh, do some studs and duds. So, uh, I, I, I kind of have my opinion, but um, as far as far as the refs and uh, the blown calls and just mind blowing flags and I just I don't know I feel like the refs are starting to creep into the games again and starting to take the headlines, whether it's NFL or college. Um, I know there were plenty of questionable calls in the. Uh, Cleveland game, um, I know there were some, and we, I'm sure you saw it. What, what's your take on the, uh, the Iowa? I mean, typically we talk about the NFL here, but the, the Iowa punt return and the fair catch, no fair catch. What do you think of that BS? Uh, I mean, I didn't see anybody signal for a fair catch. No. I mean, if anything, his waving his hand was to down at out his of the waist. Like, he was down at out of the way. Yeah, it was down at his waist. At no point did it go even remotely above the shoulder pads at all. It never went in the air. One, two. When you look at back at the replay, if that was the case, and they said that it was a fair catch, why was it not blown dead? Where were the whistles? They let it play out. There were no flags. I don't understand. I'm confused. And where uh, where was the refs? Refs always mark on the field too. Like they they throw their little fucking beanbag, whatever the hell it is. Exactly. Didn't see that. No, I I don't know. I, it 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 puts a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. Whether you're betting on it, whether you're just a vested fan, whether you have ties to either school, it just leaves a bad feeling. Uh, it's hard not to think it's not fixed, man. When, true. It, I mean, when especially with things. with the way that sports betting is, you know, 
prevalent now. It's it's huge now, baby. But anyway, getting back to the refs, <clears throat> I um, yeah, I with the way that so much money's getting uh, thrown around, whether it's sports betting, you know, college pro, whether it's NIL deals now with college, whether it's endorsement deals, whether it's partnerships, it kind of makes you wonder when shit like this happens that there's not some sort of agenda or backdoor thing that's going on because it seems like there's an awful lot of games that end up covering the spread. <clears throat> it's funny, right? When you see it, it's like, oh, yeah, there it is. There yeah. it is. Well, and th this didn't necessarily, uh, along the same lines, this, th this, uh, questionable call didn't really make or break a uh, point in the game but we didn't talk about it because there's not much to talk about because both teams suck but the Packers Broncos I don't want to talk about the Broncos they fucking blow but uh, the Broncos yeah. beat the Packers 19 to 17 what was your take with the Kareem Jackson hit oh man I'm torn because yeah. I see that he's I see that he has a tendency. He's got a history, but I didn't think that it was necessarily a dirty hit. When you play it real time, it looked fucking brutal. It looked like he launched with his head. But then when you look at it in slow motion, which obviously the refs are not doing in real time, it looks like he does lead with his shoulder, but his head is involved as well. I don't know. It's hard because I remember like when you used to be able to play football. Exactly. And, I, and I'm torn because like I dig it, but the those aren't the modern day rules. And you have Correct. To, you have to go by the you have to go by the rules. The guy's been fined and how many times? I mean, I get it. It's, well, and I think that's the pattern. I think that's the thing, is it's the the Vontez perfect effect, the James Harrison effect. These guys have a track record. So anytime there's even a remotely physical looking hit, whether it's a legitimate hit, whether they hit with the head, whether they hit with the shoulder, whether it's the knee, whether it's the head, whether it's the midsection, I feel like the deck's already stacked against them because they have a history of it. That's kind of my take on it. But, um, I mean, in real time, it looks freaking brutal. It looks rough. But then when you look in slow motion, I I don't know. I don't necessarily think that he led with his head. But then again, uh, I think they talked about it on the McAfee show or one of those where they showed the preview or the highlights or replays or whatever of the other. Like, I guess he's been fined like four times this season in seven weeks that it's happened. You show some of his other hits. They don't. Some of them don't really look that bad. And he's been fined on them. But then the one that. <laughs> I don't know if you saw it or not, but the one he had on Logan Thomas a couple weeks ago, I mean, he just submarined straight in there, top of the helmet, right to the face mask. Um, that's up. That's pretty blatant. It's kind of hard to dispute that one. But I didn't. I didn't feel like this one was it. I, I don't know. No, I don't think it was as bad as. Again, it didn't cause them to win or lose the game. It really had no bearing on the game because both teams sucked. <laughs> but <laughs> I I don't know. Initially, he had a four-game suspension. It was appealed. He's down to a two-game suspension. He was also ejected from the game. What do we... I know college has the rule where it's targeting. If it's deemed targeting, you're automatically out. And then I don't know if college has it or if it's just the pros where it's like the two unsportsmanlike personal fouls and then you're out of the game. But what do you think about them being thrown out after a quote unquote targeting hit like an automatic ejection? Like, do you do you do you agree with it or do you think, hey, just take the 15, 15 yards and then find them later? Oh, God. I don't... Mm. 
I feel it's, like it's in real time, subjective, man, it's too subjective. I, I don't like it. You, I don't like just, how it can sway. You game. just took you took the words out of my mouth. I I don't like how it's very subjective. And I think when they went to New York, they're the ones that said kick him out of the game because he had a pre-existing history of it. But yep. in real time, I don't know how, unless it's blatantly obvious, like some of those hits in the past of, you know, Vontez perfect on Antonio Brown, like right across the middle. But then again, obviously the rules are different. But if you're now, nowadays, like you're blatantly head hunting, I can see it. But some of these questionable calls, I think you got to say, if it's not blatantly obvious, you don't, you don't, there's no objection. And you can tell the ones that are coming in head hunting. Like if you're submarining in, yeah, get them off the field. But if you have to look at a replay because it's too questionable, it should not be an ejection. Flag, fine, move on with the game. That's, that's kind of my take. If it's not blatantly obvious, you don't throw them out. I, I don't know. I, that's, that's, I, I feel like it's the same thing with, you know, the, what is it, the first down or, you know, uh, touchdown or whatever. It's got to be undisputable evidence to overturn the call. Otherwise, the call stands on the field. Like, I feel like it's got to be the same way. Like, if it's, if there's any kind of question, you leave it as is. If it's not blatantly obvious, you don't throw them out. That's, I don't know. I I, I thought it was a bit much, but. Yeah, a little, I think it was excessive. I, I don't know, man. I've seen it. I've seen guys get kicked out, and I'm like, oh, shit, that's going to change the outcome of this game. I think it happened yeah. to Bo, it was a Bosa at Ohio State. Pros, you don't see it too often, but college. Yeah. I feel like you see it at least probably once a week or once every other week in college because it does – the rules are a lot more strict in college, whereas pros, it doesn't happen as often. But, yeah, I I don't know. In this game, it didn't matter because, like I said, it was not a factor in the game anyway. But I don't know. Hmm. Again – so it's the refs getting involved. They just need to stay out of the game. Quit taking the spotlight. But we'll get to some studs and duds here. Studs of the week. We got Pat Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Jordan Addison, Travis Kelsey. Uh, Addison, Mahomes, 33%. Kelsey, 34%. I don't understand how anybody got a vote other than Addison, in my opinion, because he had a hell of a game. Kelsey always is pretty good when he's paired up with Pat Mahomes. But Addison against the San Francisco defense, that that was that was a giveaway for me. Easy. Addison these polls are sort of trippy because I, I don't I, I've never really ever really truly ever done drugs in my life. But I swear to you that on on my personal account, I picked Lamar Jackson because he was fucking amazing. But oddly enough, I'm looking here, and Lamar Jackson's the only one without a vote. So I could just have yeah. fat fingers. Maybe, maybe I picked Pat Mahomes. Maybe I picked Jordan Addison. I, I don't know. Maybe I it's went Maybelline. With, uh, maybe. Maybe. Boy, for those that missed out on that episode, <laughs> don't, uh, don't use the one blade for uh, – from in your eyebrows That's go back and listen on the decision. go go back to listen uh, a couple episodes from for season one wherever you get your pods but anyway yeah i picked addison just because i mean when you're going against the niners defense and you have that career game as a rookie hats off to you sir he looks god he looked good man he had a hell of a ball game stole it that one touchdown where he stole it from that db Good for well, you, sir. And, and and I think there's a good chance he might have a, a two-week stint on the studs after this week because he's going to have another career game coming up. I hope so. But uh, like we discussed, I don't – this week I'm actually kind of surprised uh, the planets aligned. It made sense. Stand, uh, fantasy duds, we got Deshaun Watson, uh, Keontae, Ingram, Riley Patterson, Jamison Williams. 
Watson, I believe, if I remember right, was the only one with negative points. Yes. And he got 100% of the vote. So this is the first time that this poll actually makes sense and pans out how I would have expected. <laughs> True, yeah. Do you know how hard it is, though? We, I talked to you about this a little bit. Do you know how hard it is to have a kicker get not a single point? Like, none. Yeah. That's yeah. a feat in itself. So part of the criteria for, like, determining the dud, because this week there were way more players that's, that, that started that had zeros than you would ever imagine. Yeah. And probably just lazy owners. But that's usually part of it. Like, yeah, I mean, I have people injured or whatever playing, you know, oh, whoops, I had to play with my kid <laughs> instead of set my fantasy lineup, shit like that. Or you could be in my case where half of your team is injured and there's nobody worthwhile to pick yeah, up. So you're just kind of screwed picking up like a third stringer, hoping that the first two people get hurt. I mean, you could have, God, you could have done like I did in my daily and played Bobo. I mean, he had a touchdown. I actually played him in daily fantasy and got some points there. But like Jamison Williams, nothing. Keontae Ingram, nothing. Riley Patterson, well, I, Riley Patterson in one league, whew, nothing. Well, then again, when you look at Jamison Williams, I mean, that whole team didn't do shit. They got blown out 38-6, to six, so yeah. I'm not really surprised on that one. Half the list is Lions, but uh, yeah. But, but I mean, cool Deshaun Watson, that team actually won, and they put up 39 points, and you still had negative points. Like, well, that's impressive. Well, I was going to say, yeah, they, they got 39 points, but it was in spite of Deshaun Watson. Yeah, 39 points, and you weren't one of them. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> like, that, that yeah. Impressive. <laughs> but we will uh we'll wrap it up here. Um we got uh this, I don't know what, what we'll we'll end on this one. So NFL obviously it's a fall slash winter sport, um football. You got holiday games typically. You got Halloween, typically games Sunday, Monday, you know, usually fall around Halloween, it seems. And then you got your Thanksgiving every year. And then lately, the last few years, you got some games on Christmas or Christmas Eve. And then New Year's, New Year's Eve. If you had to pick out of those holiday games, which ones are your favorite to watch? Despite the matchup, like what makes you excited to watch a game? Is it Halloween? Seeing all the idiots in the stands? Is it seeing the idiots dressed up like Santa throwing snowballs? I do like the Halloween games with the costumes, the people that go because normally fans, depending on the, the crowd, they yeah. they dress up a little silly anyway. Yeah, but I don't know, man. Like seeing seeing dudes dressed up as like Beetlejuice and shit like that. Like I, I do like the Halloween games. It doesn't, yeah. I, but when I think of football, I'm not like, oh, hollow. I can't wait to watch the Halloween games. Yeah, Nor, normally Thanksgiving, I mean, man. I don't know. Thanksgiving's I, it. I, I see. I I'm torn. Because Thanksgiving's tradition, and with that being said, I fucking hate having to watch the goddamn Detroit Lions and the Dallas Cowboys every goddamn year. I Love hate it. those two teams. You get I a hate third the two option teams. In the past few years. It's true, <laughs> but I I hate those freaking teams oh. every damn year. It's like they got the monopoly on it, and they always suck. They suck every year. But, um, with that being said. It is fun watching all the people dressing up like Santa, and especially if it's a snow game, you're going to see snowballs and you know all that stuff in the stands. But I personally love the Halloween games. I, I love it, especially if it's a good matchup where this week is going to be fun. This week's going to be interesting. You got the crazy idiots in the black hole you know, from the Raiders. You got the Lions. The Lions are actually good this year. Um, they're a rowdy bunch. Like It's going to be fun to see some some costumes see him dressed up it's not as fun if you see somebody like i don't know the freaking arizona cardinals and the denver broncos like that game would suck but the fact that it's the raiders even if the you know team sucks the fans are cool <laughs> and the lions so it'll be it'll be fun to see glad it's in detroit it's like an 80 percent chance of fewer stabbings true I mean, it's a toss-up, really, when you speak of Detroit or, well, with it being in Vegas. If it was Oakland, that would be a different story. But now that, okay. yeah, now that it's in Vegas, don't but, go to Waffle House after the game. You will get shot. Very, very good possibility. 
but we will uh we'll end this here um favorite halloween candy take your pick oh man now, granted i haven't went trick or treating in god knows how long you know obviously i take the kids now but uh i have a few that i've always liked i got i got like a 1 like a 1 and a 1a for me peanut butter cups i i literally could eat my weight in peanut butter cups yep. reese's peanut butter cups or or it, it, ch- i mean been, chocolate chocolate peanut butter it's hard to screw it up really i've been known to eat a snickers mini or two hundred. yeah yeah, you know, yeah, I, I you can have a little Snickers. I don't, I don't care for those. Man, did you, I uh, did you say Snickers. What's that? <laughs> no, I didn't say Snickers. No, uh, I got to go with Reese's. It, it's yeah. hard to, it's hard to screw that up. Delicious. Um, but if you go away from chocolate, oh no, I, I typically don't care for anything like that, but. I'd say probably if I had to, I don't care for Skittles or Starburst or anything like that. I, I always kind of like the Laffy Taffy. Huh. I don't. Wow. That's like a. That's a rare. That's a rare treat. Exactly. I don't remember getting a lot of Laffy Taffies ever when I went trick or treating. I'm going to keep, keep my I, eye out. I'm going to keep my eye out for that. I would get them every now and then. But Do you yeah. know what else I like? Man, it might be more than Snickers. Snickers is like the one of the most – Snickers and Reese's, Pe- Reese's Peanut Butter Cups are like the most common. But now that I'm thinking about it, the other one that I really like that I go after every single time I see it, I don't know if it's just a wrapper, Twix. Man, I like some, uh, some Twix. Yeah. I see. I would have to say one would be Reese's for me and two would be uh, Twix. Man, I can eat some Twix. Damn. Yeah. I have to shut this down. I got to go snack. <laughs> well, with that being said, we can, uh, we'll end this episode here for this week. Um, download, rate, subscribe, review, all that fun stuff. You want to interact with us on uh, socials. Uh, it's 5th Q Sportscast, 5THQ Sportscast. Uh, yeah, go uh, watch some Week 8 football. We'll uh, catch you back here break down some of the games look at some highlights look at some uh low lights some studs and duds some polls go wager go try to make some money have some fun and uh it is uh halloween here this week so uh yeah i don't i'm sure a lot of people are probably trick-or-treating this weekend uh go take the kids out go have some fun when they go to bed steal the candy all that fun stuff but uh yeah go watch some football and have some fun and have a good halloween Britney Spears, the woman in me. Wait till you get to the chapter where she admits to killing Tupac.